Hare Krishna. My name is Hari Nama Chintamani Devi Dasi. And tonight I am pleased, honored really, to read you an essay by my god sister, Her Grace Srimati Kamra Prabhu. Soon she will be reading her own essays. I feel very excited to be able to present this to you. And it's a topic that is extremely relevant right now. It has to do with deviations on the path of devotional service. Sadly, her reputation has been systematically maligned all over the society. Although she is a very pure, wise, and realized person. And those who have deviated are welcomed in the temple. And a devotee such as herself of such high caliber is unwelcome. That is the state of affairs, the very sad state of affairs now in the organization that Srila Prabhupada established. There are many levels of deviations on the path of devotional service. The simple sense gratifier, while doing disservice to himself, also serves to lower the devotional frequency of his or her entire community by introducing impurities of body and mind. The person who utilizes the holy names, the scriptures, the deity worship, and other devotional activities to invite glorification of the self relegates Krishna and the devotional processes to the servants' quarters. This is the person who chants kirtan to show off his musical proclivities and gain fame and followers. This is the person who chants shlokas in the mood of achieving some adoration and distinction, stepping on the heads of these transcendental gems for his or her own personal aggrandizement. This is the person who sits on the raised seat and uses scriptural renditions to advertise his academic eloquence. This is the person who will only perform an artit ceremony when the temple room is full so they can show off their chamara their chamara waving techniques. This is the person who takes scriptural instruction out of context, and twists it to support his or her own mental and behavioral anomalies. This person is easily recognizable by his or her air of conceit and arrogance, and is usually not taken very seriously. Then there's the hypocrite. He or she speaks strongly and expounds the glories of the devotional process while secretly maintaining the skeletons in the closet of non-compliance to those very principles. It is better to be honest and humbly aspire for greater purity by following the process and begging the previous acharyas and the Lord himself for strength. This person cannot preach with full potency and eventually becomes exposed. This is a shameful position because it is based on falsity and affects the person himself, his followers, and the entire devotee community. It masks the glow of pure devotional service, like light trying to come through tinted or even opaque glass. Then there is the imposter, the infiltrator. This personality is the worst of the worst of cheaters. This personality is not a hypocrite, as he or she is firmly fixed in his or her demonic agenda, which is to destroy the preaching mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In a letter to Hansa Duda, dated September 2nd, 1970, Srila Prabhupada wrote, It is a fact that the great sinister movement is within our society. Srila Prabhupada also told his disciple Nanda Kumar, there are those in our movement 
who dress like devotees, Sika, Tilak, neck beads, and Dhoti, but they are not devotees. They are agents of Kali. We must find them and weed them out. It was not done, and chaos ensued. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur himself wrote in Sajani Toshini 18.2, 13-14, After the time of Sri Titanya Mahaprabhu, those faithful to him kept apart from non-devotees to avoid contamination. Seeing this, the personality of Kali sent his representatives in disguise to pollute the Vaishnav Sampradaya. Posing as Vaishnavas, they spread their wicked doctrines and appeared so intelligent and devoted that only pure devotees could detect their real identity. It is not to be faulted that these personalities could not be easily recognized. They were personally chosen, placed, and disguised by the personality of Kali himself. As Krishna sent his right-hand man, who came to be known to us as his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who gave us the gift of the topmost transcendental literatures and spread the mission of Mahaprabhu, Kali had to also handpick and send his best men to try to thwart Srila Prabhupada's efforts. These personalities have spread their toxicity throughout the Krishna consciousness movement. Their influence has led to personal and collective compromise on the devotional path and the infiltration of impersonalism. It has banned, ridiculed, and driven out most of the sincere followers of Srila Prabhupada who could have had any influence on steering things rightfully and called them things like offenders far-right devotees, conservatives, Prabhupada fundamentalists. It has disheartened many devotees, led to the changing of Srila Prabhupada's books beyond basic valid corrections that partly arose from misunderstanding of Srila Prabhupada's accent from the dictaphone recordings and led to a collective minimization of Srila Prabhupada's own persona and unique position as the head of this branch of the Chaitanya tree. In the past, if a personal assistant of Srila Prabhupada felt that he was getting too familiar or starting to see Srila Prabhupada as ordinary, he would immediately ask for a replacement in order to protect his own devotional creeper. Now, it is sadly and very painfully common to see irreverent and arrogant discussion, questioning Srila Prabhupada's stature, looking at him and his accomplishments and managerial insights from the perspective of the neophyte, undisciplined, and conditioned mind. These personalities are expert in mind control techniques, black mystic arts to a large degree, emotional and physical torture, and worse. They work hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, with some of the top demonic personalities on the world stage, some of whom are not even human, as we would recognize. Even though relatively small in number, they have had great influence upon the innocent masses by their expertise in dark, subversive sciences and have worked to compromise to throw everything that Srila Prabhupada so painstakingly gave us off track. Their goal is to annihilate anything good and godly and destroy the real disciplic succession by concocting and upholding their own institutionalized rendition of it. They are the greatest of cheaters, for they strive to cheat us of our deepest connection to Srila Prabhupada and our predecessor Acharyas. There is no greater crime. These personalities will soon be exposed and more easily recognized by dint of their own blunders and by the perfect arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead according to his impeccable timing. This may not seem like relevant information to some of you or even what you might want to hear, it is heavy and distasteful indeed, 
but not against what our Srila Prabhupada and his most venerable Srila Prabhupada both noted. I am simply presenting what I know from personal experience and observation, and it may prove valuable to some of you in the right time. On one hand, all the deviation from what Srila Prabhupada intended for us should never have transpired. And on the other hand, it could not have been any other way. Individually and collectively, as a society of devotees, we will never again make the mistake of accepting and following such purely, such impurely motivated personalities. The most valuable lessons are not easily learned. We are being set up to retrieve our devotional enthusiasm, autonomy, inspiration, strength, and spirit under the victory flag of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and our predecessor Acharyas. The evil ones could cover the pure essence of the Vaishnava philosophy and create diversions and distractions from it, but they could not destroy it. It is still available to the sincere followers. Krishna knows our hearts, and even if we have been influenced by the charismatic charm of these so-called leaders, these cheaters, these imposters, we have the Lord's personal shelter and also the most merciful shelter of Srila Prabhupada if we choose to claim it. Please continue to chant purely and fervently study Srila Prabhupada's books. In 1970, when there was some concocted understanding about the position of our Srila Prabhupada, that he was really God, being preached by a few errant sannyasis, it was the devotees who had studied nectar of devotion who were able to pinpoint this serious discrepancy. Please become educated. Honor your gut feelings as long as they're aligned with Shastra and devotional precedent. Krishna's mercy upon us is that he sends his pure representative, and the mercy of that pure representative is his instruction. Devotional service, uncompromisingly executed under the direction of that pure via media personality, the bona fide spiritual master, is the recipe for the sincere jiva to be liberated from this most dangerous material world and return to his real home, the eternal blissful abode of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for taking your time to listen.